a free trip to the High Res Expo. That would be so freaking cool. You saw that video. I want to come to the High Res Expo because. One minute. It's got to be one minute. No longer. Minute and one second, you're out. Done. I, I, I don't know if that's a thing. I would. That would feel really brutal if you had such an amazing video and it was like one second over and like the, the committee just decided to can it. Okay, that would be my luck. Anyways, make sure it's make sure it's a minute or under, guys. No, that it's really an exciting opportunity. You know, not everyone um, can pay for, uh, you know, a full trip to a different state or, you know, however close you are. Uh, and we're giving you the opportunity to get that full trip and get to see some behind the scenes action as well that most normal people don't get a chance to see. Definitely. So, uh, Adonis, why would you want to go to the high res expo? Uh, I think I have to cast. You think? I think so. Okay. I think there's, you know, at, at the expo, there's, Maybe. Game, he, there's he, video he games really played. He really shaky about it. There's video games played, and, you know, we cast over the games. Yeah. You know, broadcast. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm one of those people. Oh, my. The high res Adonis. Gosh. All right, well, we're about to have some games for you to cast over. All I'm right. going to cast over him, too. Cyclone versus Excellence are the first set up. And this is big because yesterday yeah. we saw the NA teams and we figured out who's going to land. There was four. But for here, EU, there's only two teams going. Only two spots. Rival already guaranteed 20 points. They've been so dominant in the European SEL. And honestly, a very tight-knit group coming in at second, third, and fourth. Cyclone on nine points. They definitely have the edge today, not only leading the pack, but they're also going against Excellence, who they've had really good matchups with so far throughout the SEL. They do have the head-to-head -head there. Plus, they risk, they risk uh, the other teams not getting any points yeah. because, unfortunately, Excel is going up against a rival who we have seen completely dominating. That's going to be really rough. I mean, Cyclone coming out versus this Excellence matchup, though. They get two wins here. They are guaranteed. They're going. Guaranteed 100% yep. into the uh, SCL Fall Finals. That's going to be beginning, you know, the early November. But um, it, it's going to be hard fought for Excel. You know, I definitely think Excellence can take a game against Cyclone. Uh, the last time they faced off, they did have that split, although earlier on, it did go to Cyclone with the 2-0 here. So we're going to see what Excellence can bring out in this matchup. Well, going into picks and bans for the first game, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle for Excellence. If they do not win this 2-0, they lose their opportunity to go to land. So this first game is everything for them. You know, I'm interested to see kind of where these picks and bans are going to go, just to see if the SPL group stages actually have influence picks and bans in the SEL at all. We do see that sometimes. I mean, uh, honestly, we see it the other way. Guan was a big priority pick in the SEL for the past two, you know, one and a half, two years. And now, only now, we're really starting to see teams in the SPL start to respect that pick. You can see Cyclone immediately banning it away. Yep, Ao Kuang banned away as well as Seoul. I was expecting a little bit more of some target picks just to yeah. try and take Cyclone down a little bit. This does mean that their Freya, that they're really well known for, is still available. Ao Kuang, Terra. Have to be banned away, basically. Yeah. It, they're just really controlling, obviously, Ao Kuang, especially if you're not comfortable playing against it more than anything. Um, you don't really need the best Ao Kuang player in your jungle, you just need to make sure they have no idea how to counter it because it is very hard to play around an Ao Kuang. Excellence, though, going to first pick Odin. That's really interesting to me. It does shut down the potential for Cyclone if they want to go into any sustain style compositions. Raw really starting to creep back into the meta in other scenes right now. Something maybe Cyclone was looking to pick up in the mid. It's possible. We saw it a little bit yesterday. I haven't really seen Cyclone pick it up, but we have seen this Sun Wukong before. Yes. Nice toe-to-toe -to -toe contender for the solo lane, which is more than likely where Excellence want to put Odin. Blokely just getting a god very early on. Um, you never really know where Sun Wukong's going. There are some support players who mm -hmm. can play it, be very aggressive. Trix Tank over on Orbit, definitely one of the most known, really likes to control, really likes to go incredibly aggressive early on. And they're good at pairing Athena. And so... No surprise. It, no surprise, really. I mean, Athena is just such free setup for your team. Um, I would say not as strong as other supports in kind of the full range of abilities you can do and kind of how you pace and control team fights, but you can never, ever, ever say dash taunt is bad. It will fit into any composition you've drafted. The, displace, the displacement coming out from the taunt is incredibly important in yeah. the console scene, just because it's so hard to combat that, especially with sensitivity and all that sort of jazz. But taking the Sun Wukong away from Excellence, that's one of their best solo picks as well. But Scylla going to get picked up for for Cyclone, wanting to dish out the damage. And, and I love this pairing. With Scylla, it's really hard to hit her ultimate, um, mm -hmm. just free casting it. Uh, once people get boots online, even if you land it perfectly, they can walk out of the center as long as they're moving in the correct direction and not 
into the majority of it. So you really do want some form of setup with your Scylla. Um, and Athena is the, the easiest, right? It's the dash taunt guaranteed every single time. You get their purification. Next time you do it, purification's down. I'm a monster over the top. Secures kills most of the time in the late game scenarios. Excellent. Really like their Jingwei. Banned out by Cyclone. Susano is a good pick for both teams, but Cyclone going to go ahead and take that out of the jungle. Osiris and Arlang Shin out. So targeting uh, targeting possible solo lane matchups just in case they didn't think Sun Wukong was going there, but he will because that's a Fafnir. That's going to be a Fafnir. That's, so this tells me actually Athena is going to be going jungle, which provides... The, I, I, I do like Athena jungle as well, mm -hmm. um, simply because instead of waiting for your support to start roaming, and a support always does have to go back to their lane in case there's any trouble, either set up for a kill or you know relieve some pressure off of their hunter, the, the Athena is always going to be paired with Asilla. So it's always just going to be about comboing a lot of free damage, letting Athena take out a lot of poke. I expect her to go relatively tanky after Shoes of the Magi, probably straight into a breast plate going to be very hard to deal with her and now they've also paired a Freya coming out of uh, of the dual lane the only actually the biggest weakness i see from cyclone's draft is the fact that they have four magical it's only the wukong doing physical damage and he's not someone who's going to 100 to zero you it's e much easier to itemize against four physical than i would say four magical but definitely still better to only have one physical to worry about yeah, and it's uh, it's going to be a little bit of an issue for Cyclone, but Excellence going to pick up the Shablanke. We didn't touch on the Isis either. They're going to round out their entire draft with that. The biggest thing for me is Freya is still available, and they went ahead and picked it up. Cyclone GG are very well known for their Freya. We saw them completely just surprise everybody in the first week, and now in the seventh week, they're going to fall right back. Uh, yeah, and we're going to really see how this goes. So Excellence have after, actually drafted a, a whole lot of team fight. They have the Geb, the Jablanke, the Isis, the Odin, the Hunba. Like this, this is all giant AOE shut people down. Just a lot of control in the team fights. It's a little bit dynamic, though, because they have the Isis Odin, which, you know, screams a lot of early game aggression to me. But then their last two picks were very late game for Turtle and Farley's. They went for the Geb. They went for the Jablanke. Gods that, you know, the later the game goes, the better they become. So I think they are looking for more of a late game in this scenario where it's really just on the Isis to get them through that early game. What about Cyclone, though? Are they going to be able to are they going to be able to step up and really face that late game comp coming out from excellence, at least? Excuse me? Do you think that Cyclone GG's comp are going to be able to withstand the late game coming out from Excellence? It, you know, probably. I mean, a Excellence have a, a lot of AoE, but there, there's just... You look at the gods that Cyclone has drafted, and, and Freya and Scylla are two gods that can change the dynamic of a team fight based on individual performance, right? A Hunbat is always going to be doing the same thing. It's going to be a lot of damage you can deal with, and unless he gets, you know, crazy RNG crits, there it is manageable. But a Freya who's left untouched for two seconds gets a, a pulse radio combo. I mean, they, they're going to be able to shred any front line in their face. Cyclone going to give up the right mid harpies instead go ahead and take the left ones which means the fire imps and the harpies on the right side go to team excellence that's going to be a nice little start they're already about 100 gold ahead not too big of an issue but it's a nice foothold to go ahead and start meanwhile over in the duo lane a little bit of aggression coming out excellence getting pushed back which is kind of surprising considering their Shablanke versus the Freya. Yeah, I mean, Jablanke always struggles too. We, I mean, we haven't seen Jablanke in a long time. And I think the biggest weakness here is the fact that you paired the Geb with it. Geb r has a really hard time gaining lane control, um, mostly because he has to sit in front of the wave to knock up. He takes a lot of poke off that. And his rollout's not, you know, instant. It's not a belly flop. It's not, you know, a quick dash by Athena. And so he takes a lot of poke while he tries to reposition himself because he doesn't have that instant ability to do so. With that late game Citric comp coming out from Team Excellence, though, I'm curious to see how they're going to be able to transfer that into the late game with the Geb. He's just going to be an ult machine. Oh, yeah, no. And they have the Hunbats, too, because... Uh, I would say I would say Turtle's going to be playing primarily defensive in this game, and a lot of that reasoning is the fact that they have other engages. They have the Odin ult, they have the Blink Hunbats ult, and Geb doesn't really have to go Blink in this fight. He's going to be just using the healed appeal and a little bit of trouble here in dual lane. And see, this is the issue with Geb. You saw him just start to push up there, just trying to hit the wave, and just right right away, Cyclone abused that and just put out so much poke. You even saw the rollout, how slow it was. They were able to body block and get extra damage off. Yeah, jumping right in front of it so he can't 
can't get away, taking further damage from the rest of the team. Predators, however, trying to get a little bit of damage onto Hyperion. That is the ultimate being channeled for nice. the extra protections, plus Sentinel was available to teleport to. And, and that was just the Athena assuming the Hunbats was going to ult there. Really thought that Predators was looking for an engage. He had just hit five. Isis was five as well. I'm not sure. I didn't really notice if uh, Hyperion's dash was up. I'm going to assume it was down based on that. And they had basically said... We would rather use Athena ult here than have the chance for the purification to be forced out of Scylla. And I'd rather see more pressure on the left side of the map now because that ultimate is down. Azuna not going to be able to help out the duo lane because that timer is a good bit. Yeah, it's it's going to be quite some time. And and honestly, there is the potential for the early gold theory. We, we have seen Isis come in and out of the metal a lot, but what she's always been great at is controlling objectives like the Fire Giant, like the Gold Fury. That ultimate stacks up very easily, and because of that, you can just burn through it. On top of that, you also have the ultimate coming out of the Jablanque, the Darks of Knights, which is going to make it hard for anyone to kind of jump in and try and contest that Gold Fury if they look to start it up. Both of these teams have a lot of built-up aggression. They want to win yeah. this. It's a lot for them. Who do you think is going to make the first move and how? I mean, I think uh, if, if, if I'm excellence, right, I'm just holding out to the late game right now. I have a really good composition with a lot of control, great AOE presence. There's there's not a lot of positions in this game. There's not a lot of roles that we're going to be able to see them gank. You always have to deal with the Athena Global as well. So, you know, even if Predators, you know, rotates over to the right-hand side, all Azuna has to do is quickly recognize what's going on, pop his ultimate. So you're not really ever going to have this thing where you're ganking 2v1. The Athena is always going to be there right after you. Speaking of Athena, trying to make a little bit of an issue over on the right mid Harpies. They are going to be able to go to Excellence, however, just maintaining a small lead. But that is gone because Cyclone able to take the left mid Harpies as well. Just good control from both of these teams. You you always want to farm up mid harpies as much as possible. Same with fire elementals. In games like this, where you know four minutes, there's really been no aggression. I mean, we can even bring up the player damage. It's it's probably very low outside of the soul lane. You can see the Jablanque has put in some poke, and he's the only one over a thousand damage, which is incredibly low. Still has done 38 at this point. That was a basic attack onto one person. So you really need to make sure to control the experience around the map because you will start to get whittled away if you just give up every single harpy. And I asked Agro this question yesterday. I'm going to ask you too, why the prioritization onto the fire imps? Because we see direct timers coming through in rotations to take those early. It's if there's nothing going on in the map at all, right? If, if there's ganks, you kind of lose sight of the timers. But because it's been incredibly passive from both teams, it's a free 90 gold. You just hit, you walk over there. They're very low cooldowns. I think uh, 150 seconds is the exact timer. You just get 90 gold, 90 gold, 90 gold, 90 gold. And if you know, you do four, five, six of those in a row, that's going to add up into a tier one item or, you know, being able to finish off that penetration item on your second or third right there and just have that extra ed go, edge going into a team fight. And normally later on, it's a solo laner doing it, but because yeah. Brokely is up against Malloy's with that bird bomb, he doesn't really have a lot of uh, room to breathe currently. No, not, not, not the ability to control it. It's what we've seen really is Hyperion and, and Azuna head over to those and gain control. And, and that's not bad either, especially because Isis is going to have a lot of clear early on matching that by getting that free repeated 90 gold. So even if she does get control of more mid harpies or effectively farms up her back harpies a little bit more, you're going to be at least even if not ahead. And she wants to farm because she just built that doom orb. Already yeah. has 15 stacks on it. Since we haven't really seen any fighting, she's going to hit like a truck mm -hmm. when she does join into a team fight. Especially once she gets her pin boots online. I mean, that's 1,850 gold for a doom orb. Incredibly cheap for the amount of power you get. And then boots come online after that. It's going to be very cheap. And actually, I thought it would be excellent with the Isis starting up the gold fury but it's cyclone yeah they're popping the ultimates bringing out as much damage as no possible response. to try and take it out before team excellence can respond and that is exactly what they did i I'm, I'm not exactly sure about that that was really surprising farley's was on the outside of the gold fury i'd assumed he was in range to actually hear it going on but i guess he he wasn't he peeks around the corner not not far enough to actually see them doing the gold fury but just checking out where everyone is we have the Isis and the Hunbat sitting in men. I mean, that, that was just, Exilus just, just can't drop that. They need these games to qualify into the SEL finals. You can't just give up a gold for that furry. I mean, they don't have a wrath on the side of Excellence, so more than likely they didn't have the pressure that no. they wanted to try and aggress. Instead, still playing that passive game, but it's not passivity over in the right jungle. Hanbats is trying to box with Azuna, trying to take him out. That's going to be a good cataclysm, and Mr. Turtle going to be the first, taking the first blood. And trouble now for Predators as well. He's really deep, just trying to reset, and Blokely 
Probably not going to chase him out there. Very low mana after going up into his ultimate. He's just going to be able to control these fire imps. And a good job by Excellence there uh, responding. Obviously, Gold Fury did go over to Cyclone. That's going to be more in their direction. But at least Excellence were able to get something off of it, shutting down that Athena. I mean, as long as you get something, even if it's after that fight, it's better than nothing. It's better than letting yeah. them continue to build up that and just take the little wins. You just got to, I mean, if you're going to lose a Gold Fury, you need to get s at least something off of it. And they're actually going to invade the red buff as well. Gold Fury early on isn't worth a, a whole lot. And so because Eklund's were able to get that first blood, which means they got the bonus gold from the bounty, a red buff stolen away as well. And I mean, if Malloy's can take this blue, that would have evened things up, I think. But instead, he's not going to be able to do so. Still, Excellence keeping it relatively even, only 400 separating these teams. And I think it's kind of funny because Cyclone were the ones that started that whole engagement yeah. in the mid, trying to find that taunt, using a couple of cooldowns on the on the Humbots in the beginning. That and then he was forced into the jungle, and then they filtered in to try and take him out. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. Excellence have a, a whole lot of CC in their composition. Not only the Hunbats, the Isis stun, the, the Gebalt, and then Farley's as well with his ultimate. I mean, when you're getting pushed against a wall in a Fear No Evil, you're 100% going to get stunned by by the, the Fear No Evil, at, or excuse me, the, the, uh, the ultimate coming out of Farley's after that. And then guess what? Gep still has Cataclysm. And, you know, what are you going to do? And that's kind of what happened with the Athena there. They were able to utilize the Wrath to, to get that Gold Fury, but the lack of purification going to be a lot of trouble, actually, for Azuna to deal with if Excellence continue to try and abuse them like that. But with the kill and the buff sweep, we do see the game even up. Eight minutes and 35 seconds in, one to zero. And Gold is only separated by about... Six, seven hundred? Not nope, even. Three hundred. Yeah, it was six, seven hundred uh, a little bit ago, but Excellence doing that really good job of controlling these mid harpies. But it seems like Cyclone want to fight there, and they're going to find the taunt. Going to find the going to find the two man taunt into the crush. Fifty meter fly, just using those wing gusts to avoid some of the slows. No styling, however, stuck in the fear, no evil. Jumps into the Valkyrie's discretion to pop off a couple of warning shots. He, yeah, he's got to back off of there. Uh, so this is actually going to be the trouble that Azuna's going to have in this match. Yeah, he has this dash taunt, but unless he gets the Geb as well, that shield's going to be quick. An instant, and there it is. Two man over the top. 50 meter fly stays alive for now. 50 meter fly popping the ultimate as well. A little bit of a heal for the rest of his team, but it's not going to be able to reach Predators. He is going to fall, Too but Blokely going to find the kill. I mean, Predators doesn't really need to jump in there, and, and, and that's that's what you have to do as an Athena against a Geb. You need to make sure when you taunt that the Geb is one of the people inside your taunt so he can't quickly shield that person that you did get. Unfortunate there, Hyperion just off the mark. I mean, that was such a beautiful taunt coming out of Azuna, and Hyperion went on the Isis, who was in the back line. More, the reason for that, I, I understand the reasoning. Um, the Isis was a little bit lower, as a mage going to have less protections, but you had two people guaranteed to hit, and because of that, the only reason Cyclone were able to actually get a kill is because Predators kept fighting when he probably should have just jumped away. Farley's trying to jump away from the fight as well. Cyclone trying to two-man Farley's with the Shablanca. Going to go ahead and back off. No kills quite yet, and the farm's pretty similar with that team fight and that assist. We're actually going to see Styly about 100 gold ahead. Just doing a good job. That's what you want as a, as a Freya. This is okay for Jablanke as well. Like b Both of these are gods that don't want to fight in the early game. They just want to be left alone to farm up as much as possible. Jablanke, um, with, with his passive, giving him 30 power, uh, five for every kill he gets here. A little bit of trouble, though. Two-man taunt coming out. Zuna going to find it, pull two in, but Predator's going to be on the receiving end of the Geb shield. Cyclone decide not to pick this fight as the Harpies are already gone. Yeah, and there's, there's really no reason to go into that, but we do have a rotation from Predators on the left-hand side. I, I don't think he was spotted out by that ward. It'd be very close, but Styly's still going to back off, and here comes the Jablanke ult as well. Nice communication nice coming hold. through, and Predator's waiting for it. Went until he comes down to try and get a little bit of damage. Here comes the Free No Evil, but it's pushing him even closer yeah. to the tower. That pulse is going to have to back off, and Azuna coming in hot. Poor placement of the ultimate from Predators there. Definitely had the opportunity to, to throw the Fear No Evil behind Styly, which would have pushed him deeper mm -hmm. in the lane, closer to Farley's, closer to, you know, Turtle's rotation. Instead, though, just places it in front of him, you know, and then he got that push straight into the tower. Once it ended, Styly was in a pretty solid spot. And, and this is the thing we talked about earlier, too, is, you know, as Predators, you're never going to be able to gank someone and it just be a 1v1 or a 2v1. You're always going to have a Zuna right on top of you, and that's exactly what happened there. I I love Predators, what he did there, though, holding that ultimate, waiting for the Freya to come down outside and recognize that the purification wasn't up. They actually just
just came back off of cooldown there and just I think I think it was just the placement of the ult. That would have been a pretty free kill otherwise. Yeah, and at that point too, if you if you change the placement, Farley's would have been there to try yeah, and help Farley's, out with the kill. Farley's he was still running to try and join up. So I think if they held off a little longer, maybe that would have been a different scenario as I, well. I think I think I think so. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. But a little bit of misplay from Predators there. He's uh, still doing solid though. Going for this Hydra's Lament. What's that going to do for him? Give him damage. Recent buff to its power, obviously. So Humbats, I think, uses this item better than anyone else, simply because he, he's very about weaving in basic attacks and abilities. Mm -hmm. You, you know, overhand smash, basic, three basic, same with Thor. And so an item like Hydra's that's going to give him bonus damage after he uses an ability on an in-hand, it's just a perfect fit. And so you guys say why? I want to know why. I got to learn something from you. It's just damage. I mean, it does a lot of damage. So you forego pin, but when mm -hmm. you jump on to squishy targets, it, it's just going to be a little bit more efficient. And it's a super cheap item. It gives you CDO. It has everything you want in it for a Hunbats or an Assassin outside of penetration. And he's already going to the pin after that. He's probably going to go for a Brawler's Beat Stick. Um, just incredibly efficient. Uh, obviously, there's no meditation or, or a ton of heals on Cyclone, but it's just such a stat efficient item. We are pushing 13 minutes, one to one. Only seen two kills in the entire game, and still no real significant gold lead coming out from any team. Even though we have seen the gold fury drop, drop once. And and that's just because both are trying to play this slow. Uh, obviously, excellence have an Isis, uh, an Odin, and Blanke. I, I would like to see them go for early gold furies, but the wrath pickup from Azuna really dissuades them from doing that. Because even if Azuna isn't in position, he's going to be able to ult on top of of his team, and then you have to, con you know, Isis ult does a whole lot, but that that wrath in the early game, that's not that's not easy to to, to time that Isis ultimate over that, and Athena's going to be tanky enough to be able to dash in fairly easily and try and contest. Excellence giving both of the mid harpies to Cyclone didn't even contest the left side, right or already down, and they just rotated in once again instead. Maybe just pop a ward down at the Gold Fury. That's going to be the next big point of contention. And they need to. They, they gave up the first Gold Fury for free. It would have been hard to contest it again because of that Wrath. I think it's uh, as long as Azuna times it, you know, that's going to be all the way Cyclone. There's nothing really that Excellence can do for it. But at least they can try and do some damage or get some kills or set up for something after the Gold Fury is done, especially if Cyclone invest in the ultimates. Because we did see the Scylla actually use her ultimate on that. And if and if that's, an, uh, uh, you know, a bit, that's a big team fight ultimate, if that's not available for a fight after the Gold Fury attempt, Excellence have a really good shot at winning it. We had a conversation about that yesterday as well. If you cannot get away or reap the benefits of the big objective that you just yep. took, you probably shouldn't go for it quite yet. I mean, the biggest thing, it's not even reap the benefits of, like, it's not even get more off of it. it it's about making sure the other team doesn't then get kills off of it or right. get invade, right? You need to make you sure that- You want to maintain your you're, lead. Yeah, you're gonna, you need to make sure that you're gonna be either healthy enough to take a fight um, or have the ability to, to reset and contest your jungle if uh, the other team elects to try and invade it. We haven't seen too many rotations coming out from the duo lane yet just because the items aren't quite there. No. About level 14, 15 is where we might start to see some of these fights pop up, but it's going to be later on that we're really going to see Farley's and No Styly completely unleash all hell. And, and so both of these hunters benefit from being more passive in lane, but I, I have to give the edge to Styly, and, and the reason for that is really the difference, because Freya, Freya early game versus Freya late game is like 0 to 100. Jablanke early game to late game is like 20 to 80 type deal where he's going to be a little bit more effective than the Freya and then uh, probably significantly less un unless he can get his passive stacks online. But because there's been so few fights, the Jablanque sitting on zero stacks. I mean, that's 30 extra power when, if you can get six kills in the game. And that's really what enhances a lot of Jablanque's damages in those scenarios when he you know, toggles on the branching bolas as well. Like he's just doing infinitely more damage than other hunters can possibly bring out because they don't have that extra power built into their kit. And they miss the opportunity to go ahead and try and shut yeah. down the Freya early on just yes. so she doesn't hit that time at the same point. But Malloy's gonna go ahead and hop out of the fight. Turtle's still left remaining, but Blokely gonna get caught out. Go ahead and uh, just hog out. Oh, but man. Tiberian gonna find the I'm a monster waiting for another lineup shot. Not gonna find it because everybody else is running. Actually gonna find two a little bit of damage coming through. Malloy's gonna erect the cage. There's four people locked inside and he can jump out. Oh. Put that ultimate in there. And Predator's looking for the wombo combo. Blokely's still trying to get out on the back line. Just trying to take out 50 meter fly in the process, but getting chunked himself.
himself. And actually, there goes the jump forward and a three-man route as well. One player very low. Malloy's trying to juke out. He gets the shield off, but Siley still finds the kill. Jablonke trying to take out the Fafnir, who was caught and isolated by himself. But the reposition's going to be good. Overhand smash from Predators, sneaking back into the engagement. And Excellence do manage to answer back, but they lose three in that fight, I believe. Excuse me, they only lose two in that fight, but they actually do force out Cyclone. That 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 is probably the best uh, scenario that could have happened for Excellence after having their Geb get picked off in the first 10 seconds of that engagement. Blokely was still going hot, looking for Farley's, but Cyclone GG are still looking at the Gold Fury. Predators is here, and since he does not have his ultimate, they don't have to worry about that as much, but Hyperion Close. in the back line trying to get away. Azuna going to be forced to is it going to be forced to just peel? Just Predator, peel. Yeah, Predators needs to get out now, and, and he took a little bit too long to decide. That actually might find Hyperion, and a good juke! Nice! He uses the monkey, but I mean, still surrounded by three. It was a nice attempt by Predators. I, I love this. He got points for style. He would have got a lot more if he had been able to get out there. But, you know, Predators again, I think, with a, a little bit of misplacement. Two-man taunt again in the mid. Fly gets the shield. Get pretty low, but Turtle's still going to be able to make it back. But Predators again in that fight. Um... The ultimate just, just just wasn't there. The Odin Cage had the Isis ult inside. Predators drops his ult once again, and it actually pushes um, pushes the players uh, against the Odin Cage and, and, and into the small, the only small sliver where the yep. Isis ult didn't actually cover, so they don't get that damage off on the three. So a little bit of a just a little bit of a small issue there, but yeah. either way, they still came out strong. Styly picks up two kills in the process, and because. Farley's wasn't able to lock that down. The kill instead going to going to uh, it was the predators. Uh, no, yeah, it went no, to the, predators. Yeah, predators did get it. Yeah, because the first blood went to the gap. The damage, the poison would have ticked him down. So instead, they went Brutal. ahead and took him out. So he does not get those stacks for his passive. Hey, you always want that. Like you, you don't think it's a lot, right? Five power. You just say that, and it's like that's nothing. But you know, you just add up those kills. Once you get thirty, that, that's significantly more, especially as Jablanke, who's probably going to go crit in his build. Um, the later this game goes, that's when you really start to see that thirty extra power uh, and feel it a lot. Father's getting outboxed currently. Good whoop, and the channeling of the ultimate going to come through as well, forcing out the purification. That relic wait on a couple more shots, but Farley's going to be able to get away. Oh, that was—I mean—that was a perfect combo coming out from Cyclone. There, uh, you saw the the Freya get as close as possible start basic attacking Farley, still staying in range after the dash was down, let the Athena ult come through, do the damage, but he actually just fired one of the shots before waiting for the taunt from the Athena, and he missed it. That extra shot would have been enough to find the kill, but what it did happen was force Farley's back, opening up a free uncontested Gold Fury for Cyclone. Yep, Cyclone going to take the second Gold Fury of this game for themselves, now rocketing them up about 3,000 ahead of Team Excellence. Yeah, it's like right on the cusp mm -hmm. there, and 1,500 experience as well. And I mean, Cyclone now in a decent spot. They, they've really been the only aggressors. We, we've seen Excellence uh, contest that last Gold Fury, but it was it was more because they got picked and Cyclone forced the fight onto them that they were able to find the return return kills. And, and obviously they had first blood, but they've been a pretty passive team despite having this Isis really having trouble because they have no pressure in that duo. There's the whoop again. Lots of damage coming through and no style. He's going to be able to find the kill onto Farley's. Turtle rotates in to try and help out, but a quick hammer going to get him out of the line. Dinosaur getting credit for that as well, but Malloy is erecting the cage. Spirit yeah. Ball going to woof, and now Dinosaur going to be able to chase down. Yeah, unfortunate there for Malloy. Try, trying to get the Freya inside the cage. I think the, the ultimate was still down from her. You could see it's still ticking up. Got another quarter of the way left of the cooldown, but uh, just out of range. Only got the Fafnir in that one, and so now he's going to have to back out. Took way too much damage. This can open up Cyclone for this tower on the left-hand side. Yeah, but we do, have the, we do have the Circle of Protection. It has popped. A little bit of healing coming through, but it's not going to be enough for some members of the team. Azuna looking Big very off. low. Predator's going to find it, and then three others in the process. Styly taking out Mr. Turtle, and that's going to be a stun coming out. Malloy is not going to be able to get away. The Crush going to take his this, hopes and dreams. This Freya is devastating right now. 4-0 and 3 has three items online. Styly is just untouched. I, I mean, I'd like to go and see the damage he's taken. It's got to be near the bottom for his team. We saw Predators try and gank him once, but his positioning has been phenomenal. He's been playing with Azuna a ton as well, and now they're going to be able to siege this Tier 2 Jablanke trying to stop it. Jablanke trying to stop and not going to be able to stop it. The Tier 2 tower falls as well, able to find kills, able to find both towers, and still no answer back from <laughs> Team Excellence. Styly's still trying to fight. You see 
see everyone else is running away. The Fafnir is just trying to get out. So like, are we, go are we going in? We're going in, right? I, I need some more kills. Predator's going very deep. I'm only level deep. 19. Let's go. I need 20. I don't know about this. He's by himself. I mean, now now's the, the Jablonke is here, but the Athena's going to be coming oh. back as well. And, and Predator, is, he just, he's just going in by himself in that scenario. No one else in position to really follow up. I mean, he, get a, he did a great play to close the gap, but... I mean, that's it. You're by yourself <laughs> against three. You can't do anything. 21 minutes and 40 seconds, three to eight. Now seeing a little bit of action. Now that we're hitting close to level 20, Styly, because of that little fluke from the Hunt bot's going to be able to find another kill, five, zero, and three. And that's not what you want your enemy Freya to be standing at. No, no and this is the biggest mismatch we're seeing. Not, not that Farley's has been playing bad at all. It, it's just that Styly's been playing so good, and he's been able to pick up a couple kills. He's got Pythagorean's piece online as well. Like in, in that last fight, all he had was Fatalis and Boots. And I think, um, I, I don't even know if he had the Demonic Grip finished yet. It might have only been tier two, but he was able to backspin a ton of gold. You could see the difference in, in the damage charts as well, sitting at 13, almost 14,000, uh, nearly close to doubling, actually, the highest, second highest on his team in, in the solo Sun Wukong. How is this game going to change as Team Excellent start building up that magical damage? Because that's going to help them out against four out of the five members of Cyclone. Yeah, they've got they've got Bulwark, and now they've got a couple Tier 2 Bulwarks as well, unless they decide to go into Pestilences. That, that's going to come in big, and it's actually a Heart Word picked up by the Geb, so looking more for that Aura style, giving his team, you know, that magical protections that that's what's really going to be big is the bulwarks on top of that heart word aura um, and you can even see another tier two picked up by isis so they're really itemizing right now uh, against what cyclone's bringing them um, but cyclone actually surprisingly enough not not going into a lot of penetration just yet I mean, we, we don't see too many finished items coming out from Excellence, but I think now we're going to start seeing Cyclone build that just so, one, they can do a little bit more damage to towers and objectives, and two, try to try to offset yeah. this a little bit. They're going to have to. I mean, the main issue is that we, we really haven't seen Excellence combo their damage too well, and that's what they, that's what they have to do, right? It, they're going into magic protection now, so that's going to help them live a little bit longer, but they're having damage killing people, and so now they're delaying that even more. They're not buying any penetration items. They're just trying to take less damage, but, you know, you're taking less damage against a Freya and a Scylla, even with that protection. It's going to be a lot coming onto you. You're, you're not going to be able to dish the same damage back now. Yeah, Predators are jumping away from Blokely. There's a five-level difference between the yeah. two of them, and now you do have Fafnir here. Uh, yeah, no, that's going to be gross. And the mean, meanwhile, going to jump into the fight, find the stun, find the Cataclysm as well. Predator is going to try and just overhand smash just to get a little bit of damage off and push them away. But Cyclone have free reign of this jungle. This is okay, though, for Excellent. So what happens there is actually the Frenzy was popped. Um, we haven't really mentioned it yet, but Fafnir picked it up. And uh, immediately the counter engage from Excellence negating that team fight relic. So they're going to have that extra shell or sprint or, you know, meditation. Just that extra team fight relic when they do decide to hold against Cyclone here. But Cyclone really want to see up this tower right now. Yeah, popping up into the Fafnir, gonna be a good blink. Predators in the back line trying to take down the main disher of damage. Styly, the ultimate gonna be pop. Valkyrie's discretion raining down from the skies, but not able to take the monkey's life quite yet. Instead, we're gonna see Cyclone back off, waiting for Dinosaur to jump in again. This is, yeah, just mis misuse of ultimates right now, and Cyclone are really starting to snowball this fight out of control. The Isis ult gonna heal up Fly a little bit, but uh, we saw the Geb ult, the, the Odin ult, the Isis ult, and the Hunbat's ult all used completely separately to deal with only one person. They haven't been comboing at all. Oh. They are going to force Cyclone back, though, and Malloy's doing a good job of slowing down Styly and Blokely and might have baited them into staying a little bit too long as the rest of Excellence rotate in, but that's a pretty tanky Sun Wukong and a good whoop from Styly as well. Going to make sure Cyclone can get out of that one. They almost took Malloy's life, though, and I like when I like when teams can make that call. Hey, we're going to sacrifice you for the betterment of this game. Yep. We can, we're, we're, we're fine losing you as long as the rest of the team gets away. <laughs> and Fly barely getting away there too. Mid Harpies over to Cyclone. And that's what's so scary about playing against an Athena in the jungle, especially when the Athena starts to get ahead because you don't have the damage to, to stop stop her from dashing in. You can't really poke her out. She's way too tanky. You can see she's picked up the Celestial Legion Helm. She's got a Spirits Robe, uh, you know, she's the focus for cooldown, so she, her dashes, taunts are going to be up more often. And now starting to work on uh, a health item as well. I'd like to assume this is either going to be um, probably E-Staff. A lot of these taunts have been on point, but once again, Cyclone GG starting up the Gold Fury. Crush going to do a little bit of damage, but it's mainly all eyes on Styly, able to burn this down very quickly. Not with even absolutely close. any 
no contestant coming out from excellence. They were there. They were on the outskirts, but that's going to be the third Gold Fury of the game they, they were going just, to Cyclone. They were just too far away when it was started up. Can we actually see wards? Because we, we've seen um, this be pretty dominated by Cyclone in the left-hand side of the jungle, and you can see that only the Jablonk, like your hunter, is the highest. Uh, everyone else, um, you know, half, basically half of what he's putting out for wards. And, and I mean, that, that just can't happen because Excellence have given up two or three Gold Furies where they, they barely even looked at it. Here comes the cage and the Geb Cataclysm in the middle of it. Going to be able to jump away. Lots of damage. Hyperion trying to get away, but it's going to get stunned by the Darkest of Nights. The Sanctuary going to keep them alive, but not for long. And that's one more tick. They're going to be able to find it. One jump and the Bird Bomb going to get rid of the Scylla. Predators now looking for Styly, who doesn't have any mana, but needs that Geb Shield just because of the damage coming out from Cyclone. This is a good fight from Excellence right now, and Farley's going to go in deep to the Bird Bomb. Not enough damage. Styly trying to reset. Good whoop, but now the chase by Predators overhand smash. Not enough damage, and he's oh, going to be no. taunted back into the tower. The extra shot gets Dinosaur the kill, and now Blokely's trying to get out next to his speed buff. And they were t keeping him away from the tower, too, so when Fafnir does go back into his dwarf form, he's not going to get aggressed upon or completely blown up because he's a sitting duck for those next couple of seconds. Good fight for Excellence there overall. Uh, the, the big key there, they were able to isolate out the, uh, the Scylla, and that's the first time we've really seen Excellence be the, the primary aggressors jumping onto the Scylla. They, they, for the most part, have been letting Cyclone initiate on them. They, they've let the Athena go for Dash, get the taunt here, and they might have overstayed in the mid, too. Cyclone respawning and looping around behind them. Locally looking for the stun, not going to be able to find it. Instead, there's the cage. Malloy's going to be able to jump out just fine. Get away. Three are stuck, so Cyclone GG not going to be able to give chase. Not at all. Um... And no Fire Giant attempt just yet, but Styly's still around it. And actually, no, the, the call's going to be at, at least for a bait. The Geb's the only one here from Excellence that's going to have Vision. Now they're just trying deep. to counter ward right now. And the teleport's coming in, but uh, look at this. I, I don't think Turtle has any idea that the Fire Giant's going on. Like, he, yeah, sure, he body blocked Blokely from canceling the TP, but Fire Giant's been picked up. And now Malloy's is actually in trouble because he TP'd into four. Yeah, but now it's going to be the taunt coming through. Lots of damage already. Blokely's sticking to him like glue, but going to be able to run away. The wing gusts are going to try to keep Blokely off of him, but 50 meter fly, not able to dish out enough damage. And because he's pushed back, that gives room for Cyclone to come in, take that tier two. I, I love that from Cyclone there. Sure, they lost the fight uh, deep into their own jungle just uh, a minute before, but what, what happened was that they were able to pick up a couple return kills. And then off of that, their, their three core actually then forced out Excellence. We saw them back in unison in their like in their tower together and Cyclone knew that. They knew the other two players were dead. Only Geb was left alive or left alive and pushed up. That the only one that did it back, they went straight to the fire giant and then Blokely was there for zone duty, and I don't think Turtle knew what was going on, because he was body blocking the ward, trying to make sure Blokely couldn't stop the teleport coming in from Aloy's, but by then the fire giant was already taken, because Turtle didn't know what was happening. I'm and Farley's a... almost just got one shot. <laughs> yeah, I'm a monster, chunking his health. Geb shield, keeping him a little bit more secure, gonna try and heal up off of these harpies. Get a little bit of experience in the process too. It's been a bit of a slow burn coming out from both teams, and we're gonna get to that point where the experience doesn't matter. It's gonna be the gold, but Cyclone are definitely not worried about that gold right now. No, not they're they're the By ones far. with the gold lead. <laughs> they, I wouldn't be worried about uh, gold when I'm 12k up. Yeah. I think it's excellence the one worrying like, man, we don't have any items. We don't exactly. Have any, we don't have any penetration. We invested into so much magical protection. You can see Titan's Bane now finished four predators. That's going to be big. He was able to be the one that that finished off Hyperion in the last fight, and it's going to be much of the same. But the issue is now Hyperion has a rod of Tahuti online, so those crushes, I mean those the, those Sentinels, they're going to be doing a lot more damage. I'm a monster. Oh, Almost one shot of level 20 Jablanque we, we just saw, so that's got to be something on Excellence's mind right now. Excellence, though, they do have Isis. 50 meter fly has kept himself alive, has 50 stacks. He's dishing out good damage when he can, yeah. but right now that's kind of the only saving grace for Excellence currently because he hasn't died yet. The team wasn't really able to utilize Isis's early game pressure, and and obviously you have the Doom Orb online now, but then you invested into two magical protection items. Obviously it's a hybrid coming out of Voidstone, but it's still nowhere close to any other you know mage damage item in that tree. Minions pouring in, so Azuna looking for the opportunity for the taunt. Gonna find two, but Malloy's just gonna go ahead and jump out anyway, try to keep the zone. Bird Bomb not gonna hit anybody, and the Phoenix still gonna stand for this particular wave. Farley's waiting around the corner here. The Jablanca 
Blanke has finished up Titan's Bane. We're really going to have to see the Shablanke go big. Still zero stacks on his passive, so doesn't have that extra power. I mean, Excellence are very tanky. They have the Ice Assault as well, but the, the issues they've been struggling with is really timing their ultimates together, and they have to now. Here comes the taunt. Azuna going to blink in. 50 meter fly. Already busy. He can't really do anything about this cage in the back line. I'm a monster. Not going to take out Malloy's, but Blokely just might with the help of Azuna. But going to go ahead and back off. Styly raining down the damage, but once again, Again, still not enough. We're not seeing any kill secure coming out from Cyclone yet. It's, it's just no synergy right now. The Ice Assault wasn't even used. There was a cage in the back line. Ice Assault down now, but it's popped immediately. Styly very low. Malloy's needs to find this kill, and it's going to be the Spirit Ball from Fly that does it. Predators in the back line. This is a solid fight for excellence. They're able to hold right now. Their Phoenix hasn't been taken, and Turtle's pushing forward with Malloy's. Yeah, Malloy's going to be able to juke away from Blokely's stun, but now it's going to be in the middle of four members. Donos uh, is turning back into the dwarf. Malloy's going to be able to jump away. There he goes. But you see how Cyclone completely backed off once they lost Styly because Styly is the star right now. And it's the same with Hyperion. These are the two players that Excellence really need to focus out in these team fights, and they did it once again. Um, a little bit of misuse of the ultimates. The Odin Cage goes into the back line. It's a little bit longer but until Predators hits the Fear No Evil. The Icy Salt was only used on the Phoenix, but see, this is the strength of Excellence's team comp, is that they have a lot of AoE damage, they have a lot of control, uh, and so even if they're behind in gold, just their abilities are so useful, and because they've gone to that magical prod, it, it makes it hard for Cyclone to deal with. What's the mental like how are you feeling though as excellence you're stuck you have to win this game or you don't go to land cyclone have been putting the pressure the entire game and now we're starting to see the phoenix dives i mean excellence have to be feeling pretty good because despite being down over 10,000 gold and also a fire giant they were able to hold there and I don't think they lost a, a single member. They were able to take out Styly, who's the one doing most of the damage in, in you know, in Cyclone's favor. So I, I gotta be feeling pretty good if I can defend against an FG team that's got 12,000 gold on me because th this gap's only gonna be closing. Uh, Cyclone are, are full build right now. Almost everyone's level 20 outside of the support player. And so their, their, their strength isn't really getting, you know, any, any much higher um, until they start finishing those three K-Pots. And if Excellence can hold out for just one more fight, they're gonna be full build as well and then it's going to be a lot more of a competitive game. Cyclone aggressing onto the fire giant frenzy has been popped. Styly going to take the aggro and then give it away just so they can go ahead and dish out more damage. Fire giant is going to fall with the help of the wrath and Cyclone taking the second fire giant of the game. I, I think this was a call from excellence to give that FG up and I have to agree with it. What a lot of teams struggle with is getting baited into trying to defend objectives and they had just seen that they can defend at the Phoenix. It's not easy. It's definitely hard as hell, but they can do it. Uh, so there's no need to try and risk having one or two players walk in there, potentially a team wipe if all five, or you know, being down a member when they have to defend this Phoenix once again. It has healed back up almost full right now, and Excellence have all their ultimates. And honestly, that Wrath that was used to, 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 you know, to, to focus on the Fire Giant that wasn't needed, now is not going to be a factor in this first Siege, at least. They've been pushing down Creep on the left side just to help out with the, the Assault. Yeah, they, you need Creeps. Um, Again, Malloy's is going to have to jump into this back line and really look to isolate out Styly and Hyperion and, 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 you know, really look for Predators as well. It's going to be his job to find those kills. He's he's the only one who can get into the back line effectively in these fights. All ults on the table. Turtle going to take a little bit of damage. Azuna going to find the taunt. I'm a monster going to be good, but the Cataclysm going to be better. The three-man knockup coming out as well. Darkest of Nights has been popped and Dinosaur bringing predators. out the dragon. Hyperion has been isolated and taken out by Predators. Taunt going to miss. Styly trying to get a little bit of damage onto the monkey, but in the back line, forcing out the Freya ultimate. This Humbots is on fire. The overhand smash going to be good, but now Coerce has been popped as well as a sprint. Meanwhile, Azuna trying to get away. Turtle, not really going to be the type to give chase, but Styly is still the big target. Pred Predators finally goes down, and I mean, this might be uh, a little bit of over-aggression coming out of excellence. They've got two players way too pushed up, but they do have Turtles and Farley's coming into the side right now, the and this needs to be a boxing match that Farley's win but he's knocked up. Siley's still alive. Finally takes a spill. And Farley's just trying to juke out. Good stun, mm. but Dinosaur still returns onto Farley's. The cage is back up. And now it's two tanky members that Excellence are going to have a lot of trouble dealing with. They know it too. They got to back off. That frenzy was popped. They're looking for the extra damage. Looking for the stun coming out of Dinosaur. He's waiting for the right target. Malloy's waiting to jump forward as well. Blokely hopping into the somersault cloud to dish, just to rain down onto 50 meter fly. The shield going to be good, however. Azuna's still going to get him to 
taunt back, but the wing gust, plus the ultimate again coming out from Geb. This fight has lasted so long, it's still back in the fight. I, I can't believe it. Good stun as well. And they are gonna get out. I mean, hammer stun, good shield though by Turtle. Man, that, that's what happens when it's just tank tanks versus tanks. Like This Isis, sure, she stayed alive, but she couldn't kill anyone either. And, and that's the issue Excellence are having. Uh, definitely went a little bit too deep. Um, the main issue there is they took so long to kill Styles, to, to kill Styly. If they were able to take out Styly uh, as fast as they took out Hyperia, Hyperia and they probably could have looked for some towers as well. But that's got, that's got to be such a good feeling for Excellence. They were able to hold out in the last fight. And all eyes, I mean, that was, that was all stars for Predators. I saw him jump into the back line, really towed so much damage to Hyperion. Uh, it took him a little bit too long to Sentinel out of the cage, and he took a lot of AoE damage from that. And then he closes the gap with the jump and then finds the monkey bounce. Like, if he doesn't connect the monkey bounce, we probably see Hyperion get out of that fight. But great job by Predators really turning up in these late game team fights when I think he had struggled earlier on. And it's nice to see that they have a plan. It's take out Hyperion, take out Styly. Even when Hyperion was gone, all focus was on the Freya to go ahead and take her out because she does do so much in mm -hmm. this late game. We're 34 minutes and five seconds in, and there's a Freya. Like, there's there's no <laughs> other, there's there's nothing else to really full, say. Full build Freya. Got Rada Tahuti, Bancroft's online, helping out the other three magical users on her team. Definitely someone that you have to take note of. And I think a lot of this is Cyclo not really sieging effectively. I think they're way too anxious to end this game. They have uh, a lot of CC with the Athena. Like, they could just keep taunting and taunting and taunting and baiting out the relics, the shield, the, the sanctuaries, you know, bait out that shell, that meditation, that purification. You have, you have so long on Fire Giant. They had wasted 30 seconds after killing it to where they started sieging. Um, their their frenzy was still down, and I think they just got way too over anxious. We actually saw them invest the combo of taunt into uh, ultimate from Hyperion on a Geb, and the Geb, you know, he got to half life, but you don't want to invest your biggest damage combo onto the tank of excellence. And now they're really starting to discover the defensive capabilities, not only just structure-wise, but build-wise coming out from Excellence. Because like you mentioned, there's four Bulwarks, there's a Heart Ward, there's so much working for them to try and stop it, but Farley's going to force out that Purification and the ultimate. And, and this is great. This is all Cyclo need to do. I mean, they, they used absolutely nothing to get out that Relic. They yep. got the ultimate as well. They just need to reset and keep sieging. They're actually going to go for the Fire Giant, though. They, they don't feel confident um, and, and, and really sieging without without that, excuse me. Split push predators aren't going to go ahead and put, push these down and push this tower down in the process, or at least let his creep do the job for him. Cyclone GG, however, taking out the fire giant once again, third time's the charm, right? I mean, uh, again, Excellence know they don't need to defend this. They feel confident. They have a, a really great team fighting composition for the late game, a whole lot of CC, the ability to protect their teammates. Good relics as well, a shell, a meditation, and a sprint. You've got a Jablanque who's doing late game damage, although does does have a bulwark, so that's definitely limiting it a little bit. And there's the quick shield once again by Turtle. Predator's going to go ahead and back and come join the fight, but Turtle taking a lot of damage, as is Malloy's, but they want to take out Styly once again, force out the ultimate from the fray of Valkyrie's discretion. Going to be down in the back line, though. Not going to be able to find the stun, but Predator's going to find the, the kill, and then get killed himself. Hyperion going to find the kill, but then 50 meter fly going to help him out by taking him out. First Azuna dashing away, but Farley's trying to chase. First Phoenix has been completed, but Excellent still battling Cyclone off of this. The Athena is going to be resetting Malloy's. I think he's going to back off. They recognize what happened last time. And, and once again, I mean, it's just over anxiousness from Cyclone. They they have been defended at this Phoenix two, now three times in a row, and they're doing the exact same thing. I mean, Styly was focusing on the Phoenix. You had the you had the, the purifications from Farley's. You had his ultimate. Two big, big team fighting, you know, options that now Excellence didn't have to do. Looping back around, though, they are going to find Malloy's caught out trying to split push here. And the Anthena is going to do a fair bit of damage to him, too. Yeah, not going to be able to jump away quite yet, but is going to be healed up. And now he's now it's actually a fair fight instead of a 3v1. And that stun is going to keep him away, though. They just got to back off, right? They, yeah, they of don't course. have Hyperion. They don't have Styly. And, and this is the issue, too. You're, you're using the Athena to be aggressive. That's great. But Dinosaur and Blokely are also being aggressive. They don't have a single member to peel for. Like, Styly took so much damage for six seconds straight, and not a single member of Cyclone even tried to look at protecting him. They just left him alone. He, and he can't really do anything against Predators. I mean, it's a Hun Bats. So what should they do? How can Cyclone fix their Phoenix Siege? I mean, they, they, they just need to stop. They just need to actually siege. They're not sieging. All they're doing is trying to fight. 
they're not sieging at all. They they have Fire Giant Regen that's going to become incredibly useful. They have uh, really easy ways to force out purification, and it's not even just the Athena taunt. They have the the root from Sentinel. They have the stun from Fafnir. They have. They have a whoop. Like, Styly could get whoops off and they could just do follow-up damage and that's going to force Sanctuaries at the very minimum. Instead, they're just getting way too over-aggressive and dealing with a team that's built to hold out in big team fight scenarios and have now tanked up because you have four magical. We need to see an actual siege come out from Cyclone instead of them just forcing the issue, as Tolly would say. It's not... It's not often that we get to this point. We're 41 minutes, 22 seconds in. And we're getting to the point where it's just bare bone smite. Turtle gonna find two in the ultimate. Try to take out Hyperion, again. becoming the target once again, using that ultimate to try and get further away. And then, oh, right in front of him, just in case. Extra protections coming out from the Athena ultimate in the back line. He's gonna be able to sentinel away. But the again. tick, the poison, Farley's gonna be able to find it. The cage is up again. and Styly gonna get taken out once again. They're not changing anything up. 50 meter fly gonna heal himself back up. Blokely, just a hair shy. Just, just no question coordination coming out from Cyclone. They really wanted this win, and because of that, they haven't been playing how they did in the early game. Now, five members still alive for excellence. Two die, and there goes Fafnir coming out of Dragon Form, open for damage. Doing a good job right now. He's going to jump over the wall, but you but see Malloy. Malloy's is waiting for him with Turtles there. They're just body blocking, trying to delay. Dinosaur is very tanky, though, so it, it is going to be hard for excellence to chase him down. And again, this is the other weakness uh, for excellence, is that, yeah, they've been doing a whole lot of damage to the Freya and the Scylla, but they're really struggling trying to take out these frontline warriors and guardians. And because of that, even Predators takes a spill now. Yeah, but now they're going to keep going. Nice taunt onto Malloy. He's pinched between three members. The stun going to be good onto Blokely, however. Going to get stunned out by Mal or from Malloy's, though. Just going to go ahead and back off. And this is a very tanky game. And it really is. Again, like as Cyclone, they, they've got three. Like, ri Rival are the dominant force in the SCL right now. Um, mm -hmm. There was a lot of roster changes amongst everyone. Um, um, and, and we're really starting to, you know, you, you figure by week seven, you'd like to see a little bit more coordination, but still teams struggling. Definitely individually, like they're playing okay. They're playing, actually some of them are playing very well. Predators has really surprised me, uh, especially with how weak he was playing in the early game. He has been the primary reason that excellence is still in this game right now. But, you know, Cyclone, they, They've been doing the same thing four times in a row now. And if it doesn't work the first time when you're 12k ahead with Fire Giant, it's not going to work the fourth time when you've just wiped the last three and now Excellence has full build in all level 22. Like, you, you gotta, they need to understand what's going wrong with their team fights uh, and, and adjust. And I, I haven't seen that from Cyclone yet. It's just been the same repeated process and they haven't won once. I mean, it just, it does just take Excellence messing up once and then they can win it, but at least come at it from a different angle. Well, here we are again. Same story for the past, what, 13, 13, 15 minutes? We're gonna see if they switch it up. I just, I mean, Excellence, they have, they have a really good, like, despite Excellence being full build right now, they still have Fire Giant. Yeah. They, they can still siege up. It, it's, it's gonna be a lot harder than it was when they, you know, had the massive lead, but, they just need to. They need someone to protect Styly and Hyperion, and, and just look at this. Like, back off. You don't need to force this. Same thing again. Gonna find the two-man taunt. Darkest of Nights coming through. The Cataclysm coming through once again. Hyperion in the back line. Gonna miss the I'm a monster. That's a lot of damage potential. That is not going to happen. Malloy is beelining in the back line, looking for Styly, but that's gonna be the whoop and the immediate damage following through. And Styly sticking to this Odin-like glue, but gonna be able to get out as Farley's with the ultimate as well. Fly getting a lot of damage from the cudgel from Blokely, and now the cage is going to keep the actual Blokely away. Two man knockup now, and the Fafnir's jumped in as well. Turtle's trying to delay, but here's the thing no ultimates left online for excellent. Cyclone still three available to them, and they're going to make sure that that right hand Phoenix does not respawn, start healing up. They head straight to the mid right now, and now it's actually a really good spot for a Hyperion. Fafnir getting very low. Gonna Phoenix getting low too, yeah. but Hyper Hyperion's by himself. Oh, Predators! He jumps too early. He didn't know this. He didn't know the Sentinel was up. Yep. So not gonna be able to find that kill. Instead, back off. And now Blokely is here to try and get the other monkey. 
away. Going to teleport right back in. Boku going to go ahead and back off, but we did see the first Phoenix fall. The second Phoenix very close to falling as well. Cyclone GG waiting for the opportunity for their minions to back off and come right back in again. And you can see Hyperion, uh, you know, under half-life, he really needs this Fire Giant, but he's, again, he's he's away from his team. Like, he's not going to surprise anyone <laughs> as a Scylla, right? It's, you just need to be behind your team. There's no need to try and make plays on the side here. Here he is, off the mark, though. Yeah, and the Sanctuary coming through as well. Malloy's going to get stuck there. Hyperion going to get Again. absolutely shredded. 50 meter fly getting credit. Farley's getting shredded as well. Styly completely chunking his health. That's two damage dealers down. Malloy's jumping away, and that's one Phoenix remaining. Nice whip. Going to keep them into the fight. Malloy's just trying to shield himself back, and Styly hopping into the ultimate, backing off at the same time. Oh, but here comes Predators. Good Sanctuary. Styly has the Athena off. Blokely takes out Fly, and now Styly again with the play. Seven kills to the Freya. Pushing four. This could finally be the end for Cyclone. They've already killed three. Malloy's very low as well. Turtle the only one that's healthy and he's not healthy for any longer. Nope. Dinosaur going to be able to take him out and then this Phoenix will soon follow. This may be it for the game and for excellence. They needed this win to try and go to land and at this point Cyclone GG after 46 minutes going to be able to lock it down and take it out. 10 points to Cyclone now. Excellence out of the running for the SCL Fall Finals. Uh, Excel still have a chance, but it now requires them to 2-0. 2-0 rival, which is incredibly unlikely. And, and Cyclone can still just end it right now with a game two win. Mm -hmm. Loved what Cyclone did there. Uh, it took them four or five sieges to finally make the adjustment, but we saw how useful it was. We saw the blink taunt initiation from Azuna on that right-hand side Phoenix. After that, everyone just backed off and you saw Malloy's push forward, try and doing, you know, try and do, you know, what he had been doing the last couple times, isolate out those carries, get the cage down, even if he can't find the kill setup for Predators. And they just did such a good job of backing off together. They couldn't get Styly in the back line. They couldn't get high Hyperion in the back line. And after that, all the big ultimates were down for excellence. And that's when we saw the ability for Cyclone to finally siege up. It took them four, four sieges to realize it, but they finally got it. Uh, and again, this is a, a team individually. We're seeing phenomenal performances on, but they're going to have to tighten up that teamwork when they take on Rival. It's true.